Hi, it's so good to have you here and thank you for being here. I appreciate your time. Let's dive right into something that I've had an opinion on and see where it takes us. I look forward to hearing from you in the comments. Now, as much as I respect old wives' tales because they have hidden nuggets of wisdom that we still apply to this day, as in, you know, the weather forecast and when is the best time to plant crops, etc, etc, here's one old wives' tale that I do not have time for. But I'm going to take the time, now that Tesoro Forever left a comment under my shorts video about Angraecum root tips being my kryptonite because, for the longest time, I have an opinion about opinions out there when it comes to why orchid roots grow out of the pot or don't grow into the pot. Just a little heads up, this could be polarizing for some, but honestly I never understood why an opinion in the orchid hobby should ever be polarizing if it's nothing more than just an opinion. My dad always said opinions are like belly buttons, everybody has one. I have a lot of respect for the opinions of what is right and wrong when it comes to orchid growing, and my biggest recommendation that I put out when asked why I am recommending XYZ, seeing as the person pointing things out to me has had successful years with their orchids and have never done whatever it is that I am recommending. So my biggest recommendation that I put out is, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Growing orchids is a huge subject with so many variables that not one single way is the right way or the only way. Having said all that, this video is not about any recommendations but an opinion and for that reason whatever your opinion is, cut me some slack if you disagree. We can always agree to disagree. The most important thing is that our orchids are healthy and stay that way and give us a lot of joy. The first and most important thing to note, stating the obvious, is that the orchids that would grow roots away from the pot are epiphytes. Terrestrial orchids do not grow roots in any other direction than down into the pot. So, having stated the obvious, anything epiphytic grows roots for two main reasons, one being to attach themselves to something so that they can grow there and get established, and another one being to draw nutrients and water from the air to continue to grow there and establish themselves. For those of us not fortunate to live in climates where we can slap an orchid on a tree and let mother nature do her thing as she has done for millennia, we have to resort to pots or in some cases if we can provide the right environment and keep up with the watering, we opt for mounting orchids because, well, take an epiphytic orchid in nature, it's on something. If we were to cut that part off on which it is growing, it becomes a mount. No, don't do that. I am just providing a visual of why orchids get mounted, if that is the way they are grown and their needs can be provided for. The mounted orchids are hopefully performing well and doing great, and that is where we can see the roots do what epiphyte roots do. They go all over the place, crisscross, not even attach, go in the opposite direction because possibly there is another source of humidity in that direction which is higher than the mount the orchid is actually on, maybe even seeking out some shade. We also see that phenomenon with roots that head off into the direction of another pot, given the chance, not even bothering with going down into its own pot. But back to the mounted orchids we have. At first we have to support that orchid in the case of a new orchid by tying it onto the mount because the roots it came with will not be attaching to the new mount, seeing as they've done their growing, etc. New roots, however, will attach to the mount, but again, not all of them, and not all of the time. Oh yes, the wife's tale, sorry. <laughs> Me and my tangents. If some of the new roots are attaching to the mount, and some just go into the opposite direction, does that mean that the mount is bad? Even though some of the new roots are attaching nicely, how come some will attach nicely and others just go elsewhere? The quality of the mount has nothing to do with some roots going off in the opposite direction if some of the new roots are attaching and going all over the place clearly. And this brings me to the opinion about orchids growing aerial roots while potted up. Also, having roots grow out of the pot as a means of escape because they don't like the media. Or the media is going over, breaking down, the roots are looking for air, etc, etc. That is not why roots on orchids that are potted up are growing elsewhere or growing out of their pots. If the same orchid would be mounted, 
The roots would go everywhere, with the exception some would attach, others wouldn't, as mentioned previously. However, in a pot, if a root grows out of the pot, or it just grows an aerial root system without any of those growing into the pot, then that is the orchid doing what orchids do, as epiphytes. They will grow roots wherever, and if they find somewhere to attach or grow into, they will do that too. Going by the opinion of orchid roots escaping the pot because of the media being bad, or the roots do not like the setup, they are looking for air, makes no sense as to why some orchid roots wander off into the next pot which is the same media, or actually curl back in on themselves to get back into the pot and media in which the orchid is potted up in. Epiphytic roots will grow wherever they find more humidity, usually also where there is more shade, and wherever their instincts tell them that they could possibly find another point to get a firmer grip on for more stability. Epiphytic roots also have a life cycle, and as they age they become gnarled, even though they're not dead, or in some cases old root systems will become obsolete as new root systems take over. That is just the normal life cycle of what orchids do, and some root systems die off and get replenished with a new root system, sometimes year after year. On a well-established orchid that is mounted, the old and dead roots can be distinguished from the actual live and functioning roots, but the old roots that are not functioning anymore are intertwined with other old roots that are still viable. We just don't see it because everything is so grown together. It would appear as if the root system is intact and even the oldest roots are still doing their job and that is not the case. Same in a pot. While there are many factors that provoke an orchid root system to die, based on mistakes we make as we learn to take care of these beautiful creatures in a pot, that is not why roots climb out of a pot as a form of escape or why the orchid is growing aerial roots like crazy. Being in a pot or the media going bad or the orchid roots not liking the media, that is not why roots climb out of a pot as a form of escape. If an orchid root is climbing out of the pot, that means it is growing. That means that the root is fine in the pot or else it would not be growing out of the pot. It would just die while in the pot. But seeing as it is growing out of the pot, the root is alive and all that it is doing is just growing out of the pot, not for any other reason. It is what orchid roots do, well, the epiphytic ones. We are able to take those kinds of roots that are flexible and pliable enough and guide them back into the pot and they will be fine, survive and function in the pot if we choose to do so. Other roots have different characteristics. They are super stiff and we have a real job getting those into a pot. And sometimes that is not even advisable to even try, seeing as the damage that attempting to do so will be worse than doing our best to cultivate and keep what we could consider rogue roots happy and hydrated by misting. The characteristics of epiphytic roots, even for air plants that supposedly hardly grow roots, is to grab on and grow. And some will and some won't. Having them in pots is not natural, but that won't stop them from still growing and finding something to grab onto outside of the pot. Nothing to do with escape because there's something wrong in the pot. Again, if that root had a problem, it would not be able to grow out of a pot. We would not even see the root. It would be dead. So if that root is growing, that means the pot is fine, the root is alive and behaving normally. Consider this thought just to wrap my opinion up. Based on what I have seen during my time in Kenya with orchids growing al fresco all year round, as well as all the wild animals in their natural habitat, putting an epiphytic orchid into a pot is not natural. It does not belong in a pot. Oftentimes we reference out in nature in its natural habitat the orchid does this, that and the other, has this, that and the other, and for this, that and the other, I am doing this, that and the other. Trust me, I have never seen an orchid in its natural habitat in a pot while hiking the foothills of the Abadair Mountains. Never. Not once have I seen an orchid in its natural habitat in a pot, whether it was self-watering or a net pot, etc, etc. But... Us humans happen to like to collect things, domesticate things, and do what needs to be done to replicate environments so that we can have these beauties in climates where they do not grow naturally. We have to accommodate and make whatever belongs in the wild somewhat happy in our artificial environments for our pleasure and amusement and financial gain. The same principle along which zoos were built in the first place.
And on that thought, enjoy your aerial roots. Enjoy seeing roots climbing out of the pot it is supposed to be in. But it decided to come up and out and have a look around. Enjoy seeing those root tips and try to see how long that root will actually grow. Just be careful how you touch your pot as your roots go rogue because it is annoying to break a root tip. That is the only thing that is annoying when a root starts climbing out of the pot. We have to be more diligent and aware and then we get annoyed when we break the root or compromise the growing tip. And finally, a little downside if we are distracted for too long. The only other problem I can somewhat see happening with aerial roots, not because the media is bad or the orchid is trying to escape, is to watch out if a root is trying to climb into another pot because that will cause a little bit of a problem once it has found its way into that other pot long term. <laughs> Look, I'm not trying to be contentious or wanting to rock the apple cart. I have not spoken on this matter for a reason because I don't like to polarize people because everyone is entitled to their opinion. That would include me. It is my opinion. Roots growing out of a pot has nothing to do with the orchid not liking the media or the setup or because they are suffocating. Epiphytic roots will grow wherever as long as they are healthy. And we can go back to an old wives tale just because I do believe in some of them. That means red sky at night, shepherd's delight. Red sky in the morning, shepherd's warning. And that would be the way I used to forecast the weather while I lived in Germany. Anyway, I hope that what I had to say about this was of interest and if it made sense or didn't make sense, either way, please let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you to Tesoro Forever for giving me the opportunity to express my opinion on this subject. I so appreciate it. And thank you for watching. And I hope that in the meantime you also enjoyed a sparkling neon eye-blisteringly bright dendrobium hibiki. <laughs> I wish you a beautiful day. On one condition, please, that you do stay safe. Take care. Bye.